Jesus Christ. I've done it again. <laughs> I keep on pressing the wrong button. But uh, <laughs> how's it going? Everyone, welcome to The Scoop here on Thursday. Again, I've said it every single day this week. I do. I can't wait for Graham to come back so he can do all this because he's very good at pushing buttons, uh, especially mine. Um, that, that, that sounded a bit weird, didn't it? <laughs> I apologise. <laughs> this is going really well. <laughs> but welcome, everyone, to The Scoop here on Thursday. Your video game news that you need to know for today. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, we have got a script and everything here, but I never, ever seem to be able to read it properly. <laughs> like, I just can't seem to read. I mean, you all know this by now, anyway. Uh, Chelsea with the host as well. Thank you very much, mate. Chappers has been here early. Uh, been here early doors. How's it going, Shag? And Lake with the first comment as soon as we went live. He absolutely loves it, the lad. Good morning and welcome. Another dollop. Yes, it will be another dollop tomorrow as well. And Graham... And me will return back to normality as of Monday next week, I hope, unless something seriously happens and Graham puts like a... what? What's that vegetable called? It's the dick emoji, put it that way. Um, but I, I, I'll tell you what, for one day and one day only, I will read the script that Graham doesn't even read anymore because he knows it off by art. But me, being the chosen host for this week, I will go ahead and I will read it for you. Are you ready? I tell you what, no, I was gonna, I was gonna start at the beginning again, and we'll just do it normally. But the car crash that I do into the show, it's all part of the, it's all part of the illusion. Anyway, welcome everyone. We are Ice Cream Uploads, and this is the Scoop, the UK's number one video game podcast. Even if we do say so ourselves, and we're bringing you your daily dose of video game news and beyond. My name is not Graham Day, and I'm joined by the man that we call Bibby, which is me. Hello, good morning, everyone. We give you our thoughts and impressions on the breaking news stories. We want your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions, and you can share those live with us at twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads each and every weekday at 10 a.m. It is also important for you that you do this as we turn this in. Uh, as, oh, I was doing really well then. I was doing really well. But basically, we turn this into an on-demand video for you guys that are watching this on YouTube, as well as on our podcast services, which are Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, and SoundCloud, of which is absolutely popping at the moment. So I thank you, every single one of you that have been listening to that and downloading it. The downloads are through the roof. The downloads are through the roof, ladies and gentlemen. And we very much appreciate every single one of you that listen to this as you play on the golf course, as you're on your pedal bike like Graham's doing uh, at this moment in time. He's bought his exercise bike. He's pedaling his life away in his front room, probably while he's watching this. Um, so, yeah, uh, all you guys thank that are downloading it and helping cream. us out. Thank you for the ice cream. Where's this coming from? Where's this coming from? I have got a chat bot open as well. <gasps> Steel Banzai with the host as well. Thank you very much, guys. Each uh, Ollie is that host, that raid us, that subscribe to us. We very much appreciate it. It does help us grow and it also uh, gives us, you know, much more reach for more people in the UK to be able to listen to video game news. This obviously does go live at 10 a.m. Uh, ish. I mean, it's 10.38 today. That's pretty good. Um... We know this is probably slap bang in the middle of people's days, i.e. they've just started work, they're probably going into meetings, so a lot of people are watching this on demand, so I very much appreciate every single one of you that have joined us, or have been joining us for nearly two years now. In fact, it's got to be longer than that. Graham, when did we start this show? Was it 2019? It's got to be 2019, hasn't it? 2019, I think this show started, so we're nearly three years. This is mega. Um... So yeah, each and every one of you that have joined us in, on this journey, it's been fantastic. Very, very much appreciate it. Exercise bike is for the afternoon, still in bed here. <laughs> Let's go. Chappa says, so you mean to say Graham's trying to fight off a lockdown lad because I could use some tips. We all could. This is l literally why I could not wait for golf to start again. I've, I think I've only missed two days so far. Um, and my legs, my left knee is killing me at the moment. Um, I don't know whether or not I'm going to go out today. Maybe, maybe, maybe later, later on, because I'm going to play some games today, uh, straight after the scoop. So bear with me for that one. Still Bonza says, uh, me uh, me with a host, if if you can't see it, mate. Oh, you with the host. Yeah, I said it. I'd, I've got the I've got the chatbot open now. The chatbot is live. I can see everything. Uh, no, it doesn't come up in the activity feed, which is stupid. But Fire, J Skills, thank you very much for your follow as well. Very much appreciate it. Uh, Chapa says, I've got baseball training tonight, which is fantastic, to be honest. Yep. I mean, it's baseball, so don't get too excited. You're just hitting. It's just rounders. It's just men's rounders. That's all it is. But yeah, good good luck, mate. I hope you I hope you're doing well. <laughs> good luck with that one. Anyway, anyway, we have got the loot drop that's going to be going live today. I will do it after the new second news story rather than right at the very end. I know that's probably the right way to do it. So you all stick around to find out if you've won something. But let's build up some tension. You've waited long enough, so I'll do it after the second news story today. Uh, and rounders is sick, absolutely. Uh, pro tip, eat less donuts. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, to be fair, I lost like two stone last year just walking around a golf course, hitting balls, and I was doing really well, and then lockdown three started, and it's gone back to its up again. Um, but all my clothes still fit me for that. I got it last time. I bought some chinos to play golf in January. In fact, it may, it may have even been the year before, and I could not get them over my ass. However, I can get in them now, and I could get them in the middle of, middle of last year. Um, so I was super stoked about that. I thought, Jesus, is gonna go. This isn't gonna go well. I'm gonna go back to my old fat jeans, uh, back to my old fat chinos, and then I can still get in them now as I'm playing golf. So I haven't clearly put that much on my ass or on my hips. It's still on my tits. Um, so yeah, that's just how it is at the moment. Uh, Chelsea says, a "Big big result for us last night. Two A. Much prefer face to face PSG than Bayern. Although it's not a guarantee yet." I tell you what, the Champions League is hotting up in it. I missed that game last night, and I wish I'd have watched it. It looked like an absolute banger of a game. Um, so yeah, well, I mean, Masters starts today. The Masters, the Masters, the pinnacle of golf, the start of the the, the golf season in my eyes starts today. It's been on all week. Obviously, you do they haven't done the par three this week, um, but they've had all the build up. They've had the life from the driving range, but it starts today, today, <laughs> and I can't wait. So I'll be watching that. Uh, pretty much all day. I mean, obviously, after I finish streaming. I mean, come on. Uh, Chapa says, uh, you want to come for a, uh, come for me twatting a ball and that's throwing 80 mile an hour at me head. Get out of it, sunshine. Go and play cricket instead. It's miles better. Um, Steel Bonds says, Bibby, how was it to be out on the course again, mate? Ugh, honestly, I cannot tell you how how good it feels to be able to go out. I mean, not just being able to go out and play something that I absolutely love. I don't play football anymore. I play six aside. So playing 11 aside, going out and doing training and stuff like that, I used to love that stuff. But I just, my body can't take it. I'm too fat for playing football. I am, without blowing me on trouble, but I'm better than most of the players on the pitch. But when you are not fit and you get some shit player knocking the ball around you and running onto it, it's a little bit disheartening. Now, there's two things that I could have done there. One, kick him. Two, get fit myself. But the latter just seems like too much hard work. So find a spot that you can walk around and twat little tiny balls 250 yards away. I mean, that sounds good, doesn't it? Just walking around the golf course, carrying something, speaking to your mates still. So all the people that I used to play football with over like the last 15 years, they now don't play football as well. And they seem to be joining golf clubs. <laughs> so it's really weird seeing people that I grew up playing football with that I haven't seen for 10 years knocking around a golf course now um, and just bumping into them so that's really nice but you can't put a price on going out and doing something that you enjoy um I, I can see myself getting better at it as well which is nice because i couldn't hit the ball properly i could hit it really really far but i'd lose my ball <laughs> because it was going it was going fucking everywhere but now i'm actually keeping it on the fairway i'm keeping it in play which is nice it just gets a little bit better uh, still bonsai says i went for a walk around one of my local courses and it was just nice to be around but i haven't played golf in a while now the, honestly you can't put a price on it especially when you know you're getting a little bit better at it it's nice to be out with your friends as well and obviously my wife plays it as well she's took up golf she got the first month 18 months for free where i was i was paying but now she's paying 20 pound a month to play at a golf club you can't again it just can't put price on this kind of stuff anyway enough about me playing golf i'm very fairly certain we're going to be talking about this for the next four days at least you're all here for video game news and i know you are and i know that i've clickbaited the shit out of this one because Graham's taught me the ways. I was too much. Like I was watching, in fact, I know this is a very small tangent. I was watching Jack Mate's podcast with Toby Jizzle. Obviously, Toby Jizzle, friend of the show. Um, I was watching a podcast with him. If you haven't watched it, go and watch it. I mean, he is the nicest guy in the world anyway, like his brother, Manny. Both exceptionally nice people. If you haven't watched any of their content before, just go and watch this one. And he was saying that he couldn't bring himself to be able to do clickbait. And I was saying this to Graham. If I don't think it's true, I won't put it as a title. But he's like, the world has changed, baby. The world has changed. You need to clickbait the shit out of it. Everybody else is doing it. Why aren't we? And I'm like, do you know what, Graham? You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. We'll clickbait the shit out of this one. Guys, Grand Theft Auto V is now on your mobile phone. And I'll tell you for why. Moving into our first news article today, it looks like it's out of. It looks like it's blurred onto the screen. Don't worry about it. I've already reformatted all of this, guys. I've already thought ahead. Uh, but this is all, this has been written on Give Me Sport uh, by Neil Leverett, and he says Grand Theft Auto Five is coming to mobile. Okay, hands up. Who has clocked over 100 hours exploring Los Santos on Grand Theft Auto V? Question mark. If the answer is yes, and you're thinking of adding a few more to the virtual tally, Microsoft News from earlier this week will likely to be music to gaming ears. With spring well and truly sprung out, sort of, thoughts of turning out, uh, thought, 
Thoughts are turning to getting out and about again as lockdown eases, especially in the UK. I put that in. It wasn't in the article. Uh, and Rockstar are hoping to take advantage. GTA 5 returns as Xbox popular game pass from Thursday, and it has been revealed that the game will now be playable on mobile devices also. Excited? We thought so. Initially released in 2013, the single-player story was again the latest edition of the franchise's main appeal and follows three protagonists, retired bank robber Michael DeSanta, street gangster Franklin Clinton, and drug dealer and arms smuggler Trevor Phillips. Roaming the open world design of the game lets players freely explore Los, uh, sorry, San Andreas open countryside. And most importantly, the jeweler is the fictional city of Los Santos, loosely based on Los Angeles. Uh, also the second best-selling video game of all time with over 140 million copies shipped. <laughs> the release is what... I, I'm, tr I'm struggling here. I don't know if you can hear it in my throat. I'm trying to burp hiccup at the same time with a dry throat and it's not working. One second. Oh, yeah. As the second best-selling game of all time with over 140 million copies shift, uh, shifted, uh, shipped, uh, the release was one of the best, most financial, successful entertainment products of all time, raking an estimated $6 billion in worldwide revenue. Returning to the actual gaming element, however, it is the roaming aspect that could become a unique selling point for visitors both old and new to GTA V. Through portable gaming, it may not be for everyone, nor their rather strained eyesight. The thought of being able to drop in and pick up missions just by merely lifting up your phone or tablet without firing up a console is a mouth-watering proposition sounds too good to be true yes and no though the android users will be able to play gta v content through the platform's cloud x app iphone users may have to wait some time to join the party with no alternative version available on ios plus to actually stream and play games on a handheld android device will require higher tier subscription packages though maybe may inconvenience for existing members the android only availability will be a massive caveat to some but some of the xbox game pass see as a huge wave in extra subscriptions to later come this week apple may soon after act ladies and gentlemen boys and girls children of all ages thoughts this is where graham would come over to me while he's typing in like the discussion nothing bib what do you think this is fantastic i mean it is coming to mobile via xbox game pass via the xcloud stuff so if you're paying for the ultimate uh which is maybe 13 14 pound maybe it's around that around that figure anyway. So you're getting your Xbox Live Gold, you're getting your Games Pass for PC, you're getting Game Pass for console, as well as xCloud uh, and the Games Pass for mobile. You genuinely can't get... I mean, we say it all the time, it's the best deal in video games. You genuinely cannot get a better deal for this. I've just seen chappers in the chat saying, GTA and Skyrim having a battle here. GTA and Skyrim in the palm of your hands, as well as obviously Oblivion and Morrowind. Um, and a billion other games on Game Pass available in the palm of your hand. Yes, playing it directly on a mobile will be a massive pain in the ass. However, Xbox have you covered and you can use an Xbox controller. Maybe not this one because it doesn't have Bluetooth compatibility. Um, but you can get the little bezel thing that you can att attach to your controller. Put your phone in and you can play it with the controller. You don't have to touch the screen. What a better way to be able to play a game? I mean, what better way? Obviously, playing it on your console, but if you're out and about in the car, if you're on a train, maybe not because your signal seems to drop all the time on a train. Uh, ask us playing PUBG. Um, but ha being able to have these games in the palm of your hand, I don't know whether or not it's going to have the multiplayer because that may be a bit too much, but to be able to play a full version of Grand Theft Auto V, one of the biggest and best games of maybe the last... I'm gonna, You know what? I'm going to go as far to say the last 20 years. There hasn't been, uh, for, as far as I'm concerned, there hasn't been a bigger game out there that <laughs> is now going to be on three platforms. Don't forget, it's coming to your new gen, your next gen console or current gen consoles if you have them now. This year, at some point, we're going to be getting this again. So this game has been over three separate consoles and is in the top ten games sold every single week, and it has been for nearly nine years now. This is one of the biggest games ever, and it's now going to be playable on your mobile device. I know we've had uh, San Andreas and Vice City be able to play on your mobile device. This is completely different. This is a completely different ball game. This is Grand Theft Auto V, being able to get played with a controller on your mobile phone, wherever you want, on your tablet if you really want. This is mad. And if you haven't got, if you've got an Xbox and you haven't got Games Pass, I mean, the ultimate one, having Games Pass and Games Pass Ultimate 
it's 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 one of those. Do you want to spend the extra four quid to be able to play it on your on your mobile phone or on your PC? I think it's definitely worth it if you are an Xbox player through and through, and you ha you don't have a PlayStation Five. Um, so again, this is one for the this is one for the masses. This is a massive massive proposition. Is this the biggest video game in media at this moment in time? Is this the kind of thing that will probably sway you to want to be able to get your Xbox Game Pass subscription side out? Is this the one that you want to be able to do to be able to go and get Ultimate? I don't think there's another I don't think there's another game at the moment that's out or coming out that will potentially sway people to be able to do that because the play base is still massive on this. GTRP has gone right through the fucking roof again. I know you can't play the RP stuff on this, but it still gives you the idea that you can be able to play Grand Theft Auto on the go. I don't think there is a game out there or coming out that is even challenging this in terms of play base or active play base that can continue for the next 10 years. It, genuinely, I don't think there is one. I don't think GTA 6 on launch is going to even be comparable to this because of all the mods and that what's available in the GTA RP servers. GTA 6 multiplayer will not be available on launch. I can, I will probably, I could put a fiver on that now. I know it's not a lot of money, but I'm just that, I'm that confident that multiplayer on Grand Theft Auto 6 will never be able to... Uh, be there on launch it will come maybe a year 18 months afterwards why would the why would the cut the gta 5 stuff to bring in gta 6 when gta 5 still making money hand over fist it doesn't make any sense uh, but lake says i've never felt more uncomfortable when i played gta vice city on mobile except maybe when i tried fm on xbox you see the fm on xbox right i know a lot of people had a trouble with that and i had the same trouble with playing it on the nintendo switch i thought the functionality was awful the buttons were awful be able to move my players in and around the pitch i thought was awful however i played it maybe for like a week straight and then it became second nature everything was clicking i knew exactly what i needed to do it was just as easy as using a mouse and keyboard so it's one of them for fm on consoles it's a little bit difficult i mean i've got a lot of experience playing manager games on consoles anyway i've pretty much got them all <laughs> um but yeah i i get where you're coming from it's a little bit awkward at first is probably the best place to put it but playing mobile games without a control is a pain in the ass and i tend to sway away from them because my fat fingers it's the it's the analog stick thing it's the drifted analog stick because i seem to i don't even think i'll be able to show you this anyway but i've got my phone plugged in like me i'll be moving the analog stick like this and then my fingers will suddenly drift off drift off the screen because i'm pushing up too much and I just end up stopping it, like playing FIFA or PES or something like that on mobile. It just doesn't work. I'd much rather use a controller, but a lot of mobile games don't let you use a controller, unfortunately. Um, but this is different. We're getting to play a fully-fledged Grand Theft Auto game. I, I thought someone was shouting then. Um, you can play a fully-fledged mobile game on your on your mobile. What more can you ask for? I thought it really put me off that. I thought I just heard my name. <laughs> Um, anyway, anyway, we're going to move on to the next news article. Um, bu -bu -bu no, okay. News article, bump, get rid of that. After this, by the way, after this article, we will be drawing the loot drop winner. I know that most of you are here probably for this. If you are a subscriber of the channel, we did have the cut off on Monday. I've taken the names down on Monday. So if you were a subscriber after that, you'll be involved in next month's, but this month's it cut off was Monday. So all the names that was in the hat then, I know in the hat, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Anyway, moving on to the next news article. Death Stranding on PC was a big hit for its publisher, written on VG247 by Stephanie Nguyenly. I can never... Sorry, Steph. I just I keep on getting your surname wrong. I've, I do apologise. Um, but Death Stranding has done rather well for publisher 505 Games. Death Stranding was 505 Games' biggest hit during 2020, and this was with the game only available on PC through the publisher. The game generated... Hold on to your hats, ladies and gentlemen. 23 million euros or 27 million dollars between July, uh, just since it's between its July release and the end of 2020. Thanks, Reset Era. And there was control, uh, and then there was control for the year ending December 31st, 2020. The game generated 16 million euros or 90 million dollars. However, the year prior, it generated around 24 million euros or 25 million dollars from its August release in 2019 to that of December. Other bestsellers for the company in 2020 included racing game Assetto Corsa, which brought in $8.9 million sorry, euros, and cyberpunk parkour title Ghost Runner made €6.9 million euros for 505. 
Speaking of Ghost Runner 505, games recently purchased the IP for 5 million euros. Digital Bros 505 parent company noted its financials that the best selling platform was PC during 2020. I'm just going to take a quick, quick drink, me drink, before I move on to the. I've got a brew here, but I don't want it to dry my throat out even more. So I'll probably let that go cold. Uh, Graham says, Nonali. 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 Nonali? Okay, I think I've nailed it. Stephanie Nonali. No. <laughs> Stephanie Nonali. Oh, I'm sorry, Steph. I'm just completely butchering your name here. Not doing it any justice. Anyway, if you ever thought that a game becoming exclusive for one console will never sell on another console, um, or not letting anyone be excited for this, this kind of these this kind of money that's been thrown around for all these games kind of give you that idea. Death Stranding was a PlayStation exclusive as far as yeah, a PlayStation exclusive up until last year. Since moving over to the PC, it's made twenty seven million dollars. $27 million. That's how many people were desperate to play this game. Like, I imagine a lot of people probably would have bought it twice because they would have either had better frame rates or the PC was much better than the PlayStation 4. They may have only had the base PlayStation 4 at the time. But this moving over to PC enabled millions of other people to be able to play this game. And they would have needed hundreds of thousands of people to be able to download this to reach that kind of money. Never underestimate how many people want to be able to play a game if it's an exclusive to a console for an amount of time. Final Fantasy, I think, I think Final Fantasy VII Remake runs out today, the exclusivity on PlayStation. I know, I don't think they've rolled out anything for any other console yet. I don't think Xbox have shouted from the rooftops about them being able to, you'd be able to buy this game from their store. Um <clears throat> I'll buy it from uh, Amazon for you for the next gen consoles. I haven't heard anything about that yet, but I'm fairly certain that Final Fantasy VII Remake runs out today as an exclusive on the PlayStation. Or it's around this week at some point. I cannot imagine how much money that that is going to make for any other console, whether or not it be Steam, whether or not it be um, coming out on the Nintendo Switch, whether or not it be coming out on the uh, Xbox Series X or S or just the Xbox One. This this kind of game is going to make millions. And I don't understand. Like, the, the exclusive is amazing for one set of fans. But as we discussed yesterday... There is other fans of video games that are out there. Everyone needs to be able to play video games at some point. I'm very lucky, and I mention this all the time, it is not flex, but I'm very lucky in the fact that I've got a gaming PC and I've got a console. So the games that come out for Xbox, I can pretty much play most of them on my PC. Obviously, I have a PlayStation 5 as well, so I can play all the PlayStation exclusive, as well as a Nintendo Switch. I'm very lucky to be able to have all three of those. A lot of people don't. So having games that are just stuck to one console is very anti-consumer and as again uh, as i mentioned yesterday uh, the 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 battles that are happening between the fanboys and the companies themselves eventually there's only ever one winner and that's the consumers themselves regardless of whether or not you're red blue or green uh, or whatever color you want to state for pc um all of us will win eventually especially when um exclusivity rights end up finishing with the likes of Death Stranding, with the likes of Control, both of those games are top tier or were top tier PlayStation games that are now accessible on various platforms. So yeah, again, eventually everything comes full circle. People can enjoy them, and clearly there's a market for these exclusive games elsewhere. I'm excited. Uh, I'm, I say I'm excited. It's it's baseball, but I'm interested to see what the numbers are going to be like for the MLB game that we mentioned yesterday, because I think that that being a PlayStation partnership for over 15 years, then moving over to Xbox, not sorry, not just moving over to Xbox, but being put into the Xbox Game Pass where you can download it for free and play it for free if you have a subscription. I'm interested to see what those kind of numbers are because that, that, that could be a bait for you to be able to, it won't be in Games Pass next year, but you'll be able to pick that up for 50, 60, 70 dollars, PlayStation, uh, pounds, euros, whatever currency that your hometown is from, um, you'll be able to pick them up. Uh, so I'm interested to see what kind of numbers that that does. Maybe in the next 18 months, because the Game Pass numbers can be a kind of skew whiffed. There's games that I've downloaded that I probably never would have ever paid money for. And I think I can hear me cat trying to get in. Coco! Yeah, she's trying to get in. She's scratching at the door. Can you hear that? It is genuinely the most annoying noise in the world. But I'm not leaving this yet. Right, ladies and gentlemen, it's the moment that you've all been waiting for. For those of you that are subscribers to this channel every single week. Ooh, 
I've got it. I've got Graham's giving me all the commands, so this should work. Yes. Okay. So if you are watching this live, the commands are in the chat. Every single month we give away a video game. Um, usually it's a designated one or an item of clothing from our esports shop. This month we're giving you a copy of Valheim. If you have this game already or if it's not your kind of game, we will substitute it out for a game of your choice. However, it has to be the standard version of the game. No digital deluxe 150 pound version of the game. Motherfucker, you're getting the standard edition. But it's a game of your choice on whatever platform you want if you don't want Valheim or if you've already got it. Um, I don't see why you wouldn't want Valheim. It's one of the biggest games out at the moment. Um, so, I, you know, Graham would never play it. Um, I would, but I can't win it. But you guys can. So if you are a subscriber of this channel every single month, it's usually the first Monday of the month we give this uh, away. Not going to lie, we slept on this. We <laughs> we announced that there'd be a cutoff. We kind of slept on this one. Um, <clears throat> but we're here doing it now for your life. So... Ladies and gentlemen, all of you guys that were subscribers as of Monday, 3 p.m., we took all of your names, we put it into a spinning wheel that has been on my PC for like three days. And that is exactly what we're going to spin now. So, boom, news. Hopefully you should be able to see a lovely little spinning wheel on your screens. I'm going to wait for the preview screen to come through. Preview panel. Yes, please. Okay, so all your names are on the right-hand side. The list does go, obviously, down. There's a scroll bar that you may be able to see. But the list does go down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shuffle these a few times. Boom, boom, boom. You see the shuffle? Every day I'm shuffling. I haven't ran this yet. So as you can see, I tell you what, let me just open this fucking door. Building the tension. <clears throat> you little bastard, you know that. Ruining the show. Anyway, I'm back. Okay, so you can see the spinning wheel. You can see the names. Everyone that was a subscriber as of Monday. Get off me. Scratch me now. Everyone who is a subscriber as of Monday at 3 p.m. is in here. So I'll do it a few more. I'll, I'll shuffle it a few more times. Are we ready, ladies and gentlemen? Three, two, one. Ow, get off. Is it Spike again? Oh. <laughs> oh, we have a winner, ladies and gentlemen. Big Zombie Monkey, a.k.a. Shagger Spike, is this month's loot drop winner. I think he's already won once. I think he's already won. I can't remember what he... Oh, did he win Cyberpunk? Did he win Cyberpunk? I'm fair. I think he did. <laughs> but he is the two-time... Maybe not back-to-back, -back, but he is the two-time winner. Congratulations, Spike. I'm going to get this obviously chopped up and we can stick this in the, uh, in the loot drop section of our Discord. But congratulations, mate. You are this month's winner of... The ICU. Loser! Ow! Cat scratching me again. <laughs> uh, I feel like I've been delayed. Uh, uh, to Chappers. Ah! Stop! Uh, Chappers says, I feel like I've been delayed mildly uh, because the result seems to have been revealed. I'm getting shat on again, lads. <laughs> Mate, it's your. Listen, the Wheel of Fortune does not lie. You get one spin and one spin only. I shuffled that shit about a million times. We do it live for a reason. Ah! Stop! Get in your bed. I'll kick you out. Jesus, just keeps on scratching me. <laughs> right. Anyway, you all you all want some news? Boosh, <laughs> boosh, boosh. But GG's in the chat. Obviously, the Lake is saying mega rigged. But GG, Steel Bonsai says GG's. Chappers in brackets GG after shouting boo. Um, congratulations, Spike. You are this month's winner. And so that's it. Let me just get a screen grab of this. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this live. I'm gonna do this live. Screen grab. I know this is a bit drab for you guys that are on uh, listening to this on podcast, but it's the scoop. It's ice cream uploads. It's what we do. Congrats. Big zombie monkey. There we go. I think he's in work. Uh, he is usually here in the morning, um, but I think he may be in work today. So I'll just ping you on Discord. It's now in the loot drop, loot drop Discord. That means I cannot forget that it's there. 
<laughs> which is usually what happens. Um, but anyway, moving swiftly back into the news. Again, thank you very much for each and every one of you that have joined us. Um, for this month well subscribe to us because with your with your guys help you keep the lights and mics on uh, we keep the show going i mean a lot of the money that you end up giving us puts us straight back into especially buying esports stuff and games and stuff it keeps the lights and mics and keeps you guys um entertained as well obviously it's pandemic season uh so you guys probably have been playing games left right and center this is just another game for you potentially to be able to get through uh, and it's just a way to say thank you for subscribing to us keeping the like again the likes and mics on uh joining us every single weekday we very much appreciate it and we want to give the opportunity to give you that stuff back um it, it, we make a very very small margin off of this it's probably about 10 pounds um but you guys are here every single morning so we very much appreciate it uh, and obviously in the afternoons when we go and do streams anyway uh, Chapper says the cat's a double agent. Morning, Bib says Gary. Uh, morning, mate. Uh, ga uh, gun gamer for you says scream. Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, hey ya. That's just for you. Gun gamer for you. That's just for you. Anyway, let's get back into the news. Ain't no performing monkey. Cinematic horror game abandoned launches exclusively for PlayStation 5 in quarter four 2021. Written on the gamer by Joshua Henry. Uh, it says, this is no fast-paced shooter in which you run, aim and shoot. Abandoned requires you to hide and plan every shot before pulling the trigger. This is speaking my language in a big, big way. This is kind of like Escape from Tarkov meets survival horror, in my opinion. Um, but obviously not a multiplayer game. Anyway. Get ready to plan your every move as you fight through a survival in the sprawling wilderness abandoned. A new cinematic horror game from Blue Box Game Studios is set to launch exclusively for the PlayStation 5 later this year. In a post on the official PlayStation blog, Hassan Kuraman, I think I've nailed that, of the Netherlands-based studio decided to share some insight into the new... <laughs> Jordan, with the subscription, very much appreciate that, mate. The, the yeet put me off. <laughs> <laughs> a nice one, Shagger. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Don't worry, you're in the loot drop for next month as well. Um, anyway, in a PlayStation, uh, in the post on the official PlayStation blog, Hassan Karaman of the Netherlands-based studio decided to share some insight into the new title and offer a peek at what is to come from Abandoned. While the game is still in the early development stage, the visuals and footage uh, so far are pretty amazing. The story for Abandoned will centre around a protagonist, Jason Longfield, who wakes up in a strange forest with no memory of how he got there. Though the narrative, Jason will learn how that has been kidnapped and brought to the forest for a sinister purpose. Now he must fight to survive and escape his new reality. Uh, I am going to put the trailer on. It is like a minute and a bit. Um, it doesn't really give that much. In fact, no one, because I watched the trailer and it is, it's a bit dull. It's just a voiceover uh, with some forest scenery. Not exactly the best. Uh, Karaman describes Abandoned as a first-person horror survival shooter, and it takes place in a very detailed and open environment. As such, the game will favour a more realistic approach to this survival. This is not a fast-paced shooter in which you'll just run, aim, and shoot. Abandoned requires you to hide and plan every shot before pulling the trigger. We want you to be nervous uh, come each and every encounter, to be aware that a wrong move can be the deciding factor between surviving and a combat scenario or not. Of course, a machine like the PlayStation 5 is a perfect tool for bringing such an immersive horror game to life. The studio knew that the only way to create immersion is to utilize the PlayStation 5's DualSense wireless controller. Players will feel each and every interaction during gameplay, such as being stuck uh, struck by a bullet pulling the trigger on a loaded or unloaded gun will feel different that is not all the playstation are allowing the playstation 5 is allowing for either while the folks at blue blocks uh, blue block studios are still uncovering what the console is capable of they have managed to take full advantage of the high quality motion capture capabilities of the 60 frames per second and native 4k resolutions of the console we're making sure that the environmental quality is as close to the real thing as possible and in uh, in all the result is a realistic graphics, smooth character animations, and minimal loading screens. While this is just a small team of what Abandoned will offer, it seems Resident Evil may have some competition in the best survival horror category. While the game isn't expected until quarter four of this year, Karaman promises full gameplay video will be revealed soon with a sneak preview as exciting as this one. Abandoned is gearing up to be another hit for the PlayStation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, 
liking what I'm seeing at this bottom. <laughs> what? At the bottom of here. Well, this is just a number to uh, a small teaser what Abandon will offer. It seems that Resident Evil may have some competition for the best survival horror. You want to watch the vid? I will play the vid if you want as well. I'll just mute the sound. Oh, do we need to mute the sound? It's got no music in it. Do we need to... Graham, before I play this, do you reckon I need to mute this? Because it's genuinely got no music in it as far as I'm aware. I know it licensed music. Will this get pulled? I don't think it will. Because it's just a voiceover. Is it get, like the, the voiceover is kind of the atmosphere to it. So it's a bit pointless without it. true story a story that could overcome to all of us imagine waking up at a place far far away from home away from your lost ones away from i know this is breaking the immersion for you guys that listen to us on podcast services this is the gameplay trail also the announcement teaser um and i'm just playing through the the it's like a minute and a bit um yeah i'll, I'll, I'll leave it to it i'm not i'm not disappeared it's just the trailer from friends away from safety trying to understand how you got there no one there to guide you no one there to assist you no food no water you've got nothing to survive but the complicated part is well you're a prey a powerless thirsty and a weak Pray of a strong, blood-loving community led by a religious nut job, a false prophet that will do anything for power, anything for wealth. And when you realize this, you know it's the end, your end. But you will never accept this. You will fight for a way out. Now this bit here, this bit, I mean, first impressions, um, for, for you guys in the chat, just feel free to type in there. First impressions for me, this looks like the kind of game that I want. This looks like Resident Evil 7. This looks like a kind of PT-ish, um, <clears throat> with obviously a gun, obviously didn't have one in PT, but this strikes me as taking huge inspiration from Resident Evil 7 in the way that the character moves with the way that the gun is on the screen. It looks like it moves quite well as well. That's that's the one of the most important things for me is how horror games play. This looks really, really good. The gun isn't staying still, and that's one of the most important things for me. The gun isn't staying still. As you walk, the gun bounces in your hand. You can see it in your shadow underneath as well. So the hover, they obviously are using everything that's available to them. It is only early days with the console, so I'm interested to see how this goes. But using the DualSense controller, again, this I think this now is probably one of the eagerly anticipated games for me this year as someone who, uh, believe it or not, likes horror games. Um, <laughs> Asim says, that doesn't sound like Bibi. This sounds like me, though. Uh, Gary Clark says, I want Bibi to voice over on that trailer. It will be a hundred times better. It's not because I have, a, I have for a big guy, quite a high pitched voice. And if you haven't heard me laugh before, then you're missing out. Um, but yeah, I can't do voiceover stuff like that. When I hear myself back on, on streams and stuff, I cringe a little bit. Um, cause I'm trying to sound like I'm trying to, I'm trying to not have, <laughs> I'm trying not to be as mank as I usually am. <laughs> I'm trying to be a lot more nicer. Um, it's like when you hear a scouser sing, they don't sound scouse. And that's probably that's probably a good thing. <laughs> it's just one of the things I'm trying, when I'm trying to talk and I'm trying to be, I don't know, a presenter or a host, I'm trying not to use my normal voice. And it's just so much higher uh, and a little bit camper. Um, but yeah, I'm 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 so looking forward to this game. Um, I've seen the trailer yesterday and I watched it a couple of times. And the thing that I caught the most of was it looks like it's got I don't want to say dynamic lighting because it's such a cop out. 
Um, but the lighting in the forest and everything, the forest looks amazing. It looks terrifying. It's very Blair Witchy um, from from what we've seen. I'm not sure what the, the gameplay is going to be like for this game yet. We haven't seen the gameplay trailer. That should obviously come back. The only other thing that kind of worries me a little bit about this is that it's the game is in early development and it's meant to be coming out later on this year. Now, unless they've had super, super super duper people that are working on this i nearly blue screen then did you tell um unless they've had a lot of people working on this that know how to use these engines and know how to get the best out of the console early i'm not sure how this is going to be because there's been a lot more games that have been in development for a lot longer that have either turned out worse or been better for that a year with the game or maybe well, okay we'll give them 15 months based off of the console coming out maybe 18 an absolute push is that enough time to be able to try and get the most out of this? I can't imagine it being a very long game anyway, because horror games, te they're not really that long. Like, if, you, if you've if you got a 20-hour horror game, that's far too long. A lot of people don't want to, didn't want to pay 50, 60 pounds for Resident Evil 7 because it was, like, an eight-hour game. I struggle to try and find a horror game that lasts that long. Like, trying to keep everything in one place, trying to get the storyline to be what you want it to be in that amount of time. I feel like you're just putting filler in at that point. Just tell the story that you need to tell. If it's four hours long, Resident Evil 3 you can complete in an hour. Like, the first playthrough, obviously not. But you can complete Resident Evil 3 in, like, an hour. Easy. No problems. This... I'm I'm just looking forward to it. I'm, I I like to be terrified when I'm playing games because that's what I get my enjoyment out of. Action games, fucking hell, there's a million and one of them. But horror games that are done well are few and far between. This looks a little bit like Resident Evil Seven meets Escape from Tarkov kind of thing. So you're having to think about your next move before you can you go in like Resident Evil after you picked up a load of guns after you picked up a load of ammo. Chances are you can probably go in. You don't have to be as tactical because you've got enough shit in your backpack to be able to take down whatever it is that's in front of you. Escape from Taco, you don't really have the opportunity to be able to do that. You have to do a lot. You have to plan your mission. You have to plan, okay, so there's two of us. You take the left-hand side. I'll take through the center. Um, try and scope out as much as you can through there. I'll keep left, and then we'll try and work our way around to the middle. That's what I want to see from a horror game. You don't really see that. Um, so, yeah, I'm super interested. Super interested. Horror game that lasts Outlast. Sorry, not sorry. Outlast is fucking terrifying. I'm fairly certain Graham and Bridie played that. I played that on here. I'm fairly certain that they did. Uh, I know they definitely played Evil Within, and that was enjoy. Uh, that was enjoyable to watch them too. Shit themselves. Um, many many times playing those two games, but I like I like a horror game. I don't know if I don't know if anybody else knows that, but. They they are the they are the games that speak to me a lot more because usually if it's done well the storyline, the storyline is the most important thing with an action game. You can just put areas where it's just full of enemies. You have a gun that's got seven thousand rounds in it and you just take them all out. That doesn't take a lot of storyline. That doesn't take a lot of storytelling. However, a horror game, every room has to count. Everything has to be strategically placed. Everything has to have a narrative. There's not a good a good horror game has to. Ha everything has to have a meaning otherwise it's just filler and people will see right through that and it'll turn them off straight away that's what was so good about the likes of pt that was what was so good and got us back on track with resident evil 7 that's what's so good about the new remake resident evil games that's how i think dano for dano crisis could come back and kick a lot of ass i think they may have missed the boat in terms of people being excited about dinosaurs <clears throat> with the old jurassic park films um and how well that they was doing i feel like that would have been a perfect time to release those games but atmospheric horror games then there isn't a lot of them that are great there's a lot of them that have taken huge inspirations from the likes of pt and just basically copied it with a fresh liquor paint that isn't cool people will see straight through it <clears throat> gary clark says outlast outlasted me <laughs> anyway moving swiftly on <laughs> to our last news article of the day uh for the dollop can anyone guess what it is Asim, is, Asim has joined us at the correct time because, right, clip this because you can put it on your social medias later on. I'm just saying that now. Are you ready? I think I pressed the button. What we're saying. If not, oh, you just see me squinting at my screen. It worked, it worked. EA confirmed Masters partnership for the new PGA Tour golf game. 
This has been written by Andy Robinson at VGC. A Frostbite-powered instalment will be exclusively feature all four majors. Electronic Arts has announced a partnership for the Masters Tournament for its next EA Sports PGA Tour game, which will be subtitled The Road to Masters. Fred, uh, well, Masters has started today. I can guarantee it will be a lot more enjoyable than this fucking EPC that's going on. Anyway, Fred Ridley, chairman of Augusta National Golf Club, announced the news alongside the game's cover during its annual press conference before the 2021 Masters Tournament today. According to the publisher, EA Sports PGA Tour will be the exclusive home of all, fa all four majors, the Masters Tournament, the PGA Championship, the US Open Championship, and the Open Championship. EA claims it's employed the first of its kind aerial scanning to collect millions of data points from the Augusta National Course, which it says previously have been inaccessible in golf games. PGA Tour still doesn't have a release date, but EA say it will share more news in the coming months. I really do like the front cover of that, to be perfectly honest. I absolutely adore this cover. Anyway... Uh, the game is currently in development of EA's Triburan uh, tri studio NBA Live Madden and will be powered by the publisher's flagship Frostbite engine, which it says will leverage stunning fidelity, breathtaking immersion environments and approachable dynamic gameplay. <laughs> Again, I apologise. I, um, I have no idea what my throat's doing at this moment. Uh, we're running to partner with Augusta National home of the Masters Tournament, to feature the course and its traditions exclusively in EA Sports PGA Tour, said EA Sports boss Cam Webber. EA Sports is committed to growing the love of sports for everyone, and through our partnership with the PGA Tour, Augusta National and other majors, we will bring new long-time fans closer to the big events than ever in golf. Uh, the EA published the PGA Tour games from 1990 to 1998. Uh, EA published games with endorsement from Tiger Woods, a relationship that lasted nearly two decades. The publisher's last golf tile title was 2015's Rory McIlroy PGA Tour. Last year, rival games publisher 2K Sports published PGA Tour 2K21 and recently announced a partnership with longtime EA ambassador Tiger Woods. 2K announced that it will be acquiring the publishing rights to the PGA Tour in 2018, although EA claimed at the time it still had a relationship with the event. Anyway. Anyway. I'm excited that there is going to be competition. On the on the <laughs> on the dancer, as you call it, when you get onto the green in golf, I'm excited that there's going to be more than one golf game coming out because the, for as far for as long as I have ever played golf games, EA has treated their golf games like an arcade experience. I cannot remember. In fact, you probably can't see it because his head's in the way. But I've got a lot of old P PS1 golf games behind there, PGA Tours. I've got a load of Tiger Woods games down there. I've got the Golf Club games, which has obviously turned into PGA Tour 2K21. My allegiance is with the boys in green, PGA Tour. 2K21 is by far the best golf game I've ever played in my life. I haven't been paid to say that. I've played the Golf Club games for the last eight years. They have been the simulation golf game that we have all loved, and that's why people still play this game. It's a simulation at the end of the day. That's what they want from their sports games. They want The arcade stuff is fantastic. We all enjoy that. I enjoy playing old-school Pro Evo games more than the last person. However, when it comes to games like this and you have a community that have been creating the likes of Augusta, that have been creating the likes of St. Andrew, Andrews, that have been creating golf courses around the world that are in the game one way or another, whether or not you have to use fake names or not, they can have all the tournaments that they won. They can have all four of the majors. They can have the Masters. They can have the US Tour. It doesn't really matter. The golf courses are available in other games where the simulation is so much better. There was This Rory McIlroy game that came out six years ago was probably the the worst golf game I have ever played and that was when I kind of I wanted something different and then the golf club came along and changed it all so EA have got a lot of work to do if you go into any of EA's posts and tweets that have since they've announced that this game will be coming back a lot of the community are kind of like do not bring do not bring another rescaled Rory game out. It will not work. People have people are way past that. They don't want to be smacking balls through imaginary floating circles in the sky to be able to get 20 points. Like that's the, the arcade element of the games ruined it. And I think that's what people want. They don't want arcade golf games. They want the simulation. That's why TGC Tours is thriving. I mean, I think TGC has kind of been inherited by 2K to a degree, um, or at least HP Studios. They've inherited that because that's what people want. They want to be able to do esports tournaments within a community. Go onto any of the Facebook pages, the thriving. 
this is a lot of work to do to be able to get people back. And I'm speaking to this as, as a fan of the old Tiger Woods games, which um, I have played the living shit out of. I have them from a PSP. I have them from a 360. Like, I played the absolute living shit out of these Tiger Woods games. I just feel like there isn't a space in the market for an arcade golf game. We've got everybody's golf. That is a that is a very good arcade golf game. PGA should be, EA Sports should be looking at something completely different with that. If they want to try and bring a feverish type of simulation to a golf game, more power to them. Chances are I will, I will still be picking this game up and I still will be playing this game to a degree. I want to see what it wants to offer me. I want to see what their campaign's like. I want to see what their uh, storytelling is going to be like in the seasons. Like how many other sponsorships are they going to be able to take? Because we know that Tiger Woods isn't going to be in this game. Is Rory McIlroy going to be in this game? Is Justin Thomas not going to be the cover star of whenever the new uh, PGA game comes out, whether or not it's going to be this year, the year after? I genuinely have no idea what this EA game is going to look like. However, it's convenient timing that they've tried to, to 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 announce these games, obviously around the Masters. It's got the home of Augusta on the front cover. Um, and Tiger Woods obviously signing with uh, with 2K. It's a very good time to be a golf fan. I'm just interested to see what direction they try to take this game because I think there's a lot of directions that they can take it. I don't think it's going to be the right one for them straight off the bat. I am happy to eat my own words. I'm excited to be able to play it still. I just don't think it's going to be able to give me the excitement I once had for an EA Sports golf game. Does that make sense? I feel like I've said a lot of words there, but I'm speaking from the heart. I've just seen Mario Golf is due next month. I, uh, mate, mate, Oh, I am so looking forward to that game. Like Mario Golf game is a different breed. Like you can talk about arcade games and stuff like that, but using your fucking Joy-Con as a as a as a as a golf club, baby, we're gonna have some fun with that. Anyway, uh, Asim says, "Love it. Bring on the competition. You love to see it. Wonder what the ultimate team mode will look like." <laughs> says Iceman. Uh, Gary Clark says, "Balls everywhere." Chapa says, "I'm glad that it's going to be more competition for 2K to blow this out of the water." Chapa also says that it might push them both to get really creative, which is always nice. Though 2K's game game is class anyway. I absolutely agree. The difference between playing 2K game on the PC and then playing it on the PlayStation 5 is night and day. Like the frame rates and stuff on PC annihilate the console versions of the game. Um, but yeah, I can't, I can't wait to see what happens in the future because I don't know where they haven't released a, a, a date for this yet. It has it. The, the most important thing about this and take this with a pinch of salt, because this is going to be the cover art, but it doesn't mention a, a year on the front of this. Is this going to be PGA tour 2k 20? Uh, we don't know if there's going to be a 2K game next year. Is that going to be 2K22? I genuinely have no idea. Um, but PGA Tour on the front of this, EA Sports, is that going to have a number? Is that going to be coming out this year? I can't imagine it because the Masters has already started. So it wouldn't feel right for them to be able to bring it out later in the year unless it was genuinely like, uh, you know, when FIFA used to bring out Road to World Cups and stuff like that a couple of months beforehand. So I don't know whether or not it's going to be like January next year that would make more sense because it would be leading up to the Masters at that point. Who knows? Who knows? But it hasn't got a date on it, so we genuinely have no idea. It's all just uh, show and tell. Insert, uh, sorry, Iceman says, insert uh, nothing can beat Wii Sports version of the sports comment. I loved I loved Wii Sports. For the time that came out, people are speedrunning that shit. It's mad. Uh, Gary Clark says, I think we'll see a different EA golf game this time round. They know they made a mistake with the last one. I'm confident uh, that they'll fix that. Uh, Ice Cream Waller says, says Bibby sat in a 2K shirt in front of a 2K box. Shill, I am a paid shill. I do not give a shit. I am a massive advocate for the 2K stuff. I absolutely adore that game. I will put my name on games that I actually enjoy playing. And the Rara McElroy game got taken back to the shop three days later. Make of that what you will, but... Yeah, if if people want me to be a paid shell, send me more, send me more t-shirts, send me more boxes. I'll be more than happy to be able to do that for you. Uh, D Max says, "Morning, Shag. Good morning, Shag. How's it going, pal?" Uh, <clears throat> Gary Clark says, "Next year, I reckon." Uh, Asim says, "All I want to know is we has plans." There we go. There we go. You heard it from the horse's mouth. I'm not saying you're an horse, but you heard it from Asim. I can't wait to be like this is a this is a, an amazing time for golf in general since I think since lockdown happened the first lockdown golf clubs up and down the country started to get more and more members through the door the the problem with golf is it's seen as an old man sport which predominantly it is it's like if you go to any golf club it's usually some old 
60 to 70 year old bloke who's an arrogant asshole sat on the board of directors who makes all the decisions based off of what him and what he wants him and his mates to be able to do golf is changing golf is changing there is a lot of 15 16 to 25 30 year olds coming through the door now into golf and i think with the lockdown happening and no one being able to play football but they're able to play golf I think the dynamic of golf is changing and we're starting to get younger players into the golf game, which again is the right, it's the right thing to do because eventually those 60, 70 year old blokes aren't going to be able to play golf anymore. They'll be able to go out and play maybe in nine or 10 holes. They're not going to be able to be a captain. They're not going to be able to even be the president, but it's shaping the way that we see golf. And I think it's cool having the likes of Bryson come in and change the way that golf's played. You've got Rory who seems to have fallen on the way, fallen down the wayside a little bit. He's not winning as much as he used to. Tiger Woods coming back and winning the 2019 Masters kind of puts him back in contention again, obviously since his car crash and things like that. Um, kind of gone down the wayside. Spieth starting to win again. Dustin Johnson playing some of the best golf he's ever played in his life. Lee Westwood coming back at 43 years old, I think it is, and going toe-to-toe -to -toe in back-to-back -back tournaments. The way that golf is playing and the way that golf is, is completely changing. <clears throat> I wonder what the golf games are going to give us in that respect. But anyway, enough of my face and enough of me rabbiting on about golf because I genuinely can. <laughs> golf sticks. I have a few golf bats. Uh, Day D Max says four days or uh, four days off. Masters life's good. Exactly, mate. Uh, I'm the Tiger Woods of foot golf, mate. I I've played foot golf twice in my life, and I enjoyed it so much. I see you play. I, I see you. I see, not ice cream uploads. I see you playing it quite a bit. Um, I see you posting it on Instagram and stuff like that. So uh, that's mad. It's mad. I'd really need to play. There's one near Graham actually. There's one near Graham that I go to. Is it's not Fallowfield, I think. Is it not? It might be. No, it's style. It's style, not great style. It's style golf club. Uh, they have a foot golf pitch right next to them as well. That's class. That's where I've been to play a couple of times. Uh, but anyway, enough about me and golf. Um, I mean, it probably would be a good idea for me to get into going playing PGA straight after this. Um, but I genuinely have no idea what I'm going to be playing after this. Um, so we will see, I suppose. Um, but it's been an absolute pleasure to be able to bring you the news again today for Thursday, the 8th of April. I'll be back again tomorrow with some news for you. And if you want to be involved with the show, there is obviously two ways that you can do that. You all know this by now anyway. But if you are watching this on demand, go into the description below. You'll find all of our social media links. I make up it again. What is wrong with me? It's like I start to talk too much and I start to wake up. Um, if you are watching this on demand, then go into the description below. You'll be able to find this. If you are listening to us on podcast services, go into the description. Again, the links are for you there. But you can find us on social media, at Ice Cream World, across all major social media profiles. If you want to get involved with the competition, uh, competition, conversation, and start to give us more news to talk about and you want to be involved with the show, there is another way you can do that and find us on Discord. It's at, uh, it's not Ice Cream, <laughs> fucking hell. The description is in the chat. And it's also in the description on the other video on demand. I apologize. I've completely butchered that. This is what Graham usually does. Um, I've just heard some feedback then. Oh, no. That's not anything to do with that. But anyway, we'll be back tomorrow, 10 a.m.-ish, with some more video game news to shape your show. And shape the rest of the day. I mean, it's the last one of the week. What more What more do you ask for? We may have some more golf news. I may be super excited or maybe super tired because I've been staying up to watch it all night. But until then, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure to be able to bring in this show. Uh, and there's two things I want you to do. First of all, look after yourselves. Second of all, stay frosty.